Well, let's talk about addresses and pointers. First of all, I have a string str with a value of apple. And then I have a C out statement, which is printing out my string. So if I run this, it will just print out apple right here. And that's great. But where is apple stored? Well, you can get the address of the string information by using the at sign. So I'll go ahead and do at right here for the address of the string. And I'll just say that this points to, let's say points to my actual string value. So we'll write like this. So this address right here is pointing to this data. So I run that and you can see the address is this long thing right here and it's pointing to this data apple. Now, I could store that address in a variable and use it somewhere else. So I will make a string pointer with a star PCR and I'm going to assign it to the address of the string. So what does that do? Well, I've got the same thing right here. I'm just gonna print this thing out. So what we have, first of all, is a pointer. And let's print out the address of the pointer so you can see where the pointer is actually stored. And then you can see what is in the pointer. So my pointer, which will happen to be the address of the string. And then I will show you how to dereference the pointer. So this will print out an arrow and we're going to show you a dereference pointer right here and then I will have my end L. All right so what do we have? We have the address of the pointer which is right here. The pointer is pointing to the address of the string. You can see the address of the string right here and the pointer its contents is the address of the string. So that's the PTR right here. And then if you dereference the pointer, which may, basically means look at what's at the pointer's location or what it's stored at, you can see Apple. So that kind of makes sense, right? So let's do something else with it. Let's jump to, let's say integers. If I do int and let's have num and we'll have this be 10. And I can do the address of num. So I'll make an int pointer. So IPTR for my integer pointer. And we'll make that equal to the address of num. At this point, I can display my num with a CL statement. right here num and i can also display the pointer so just space and the pointer so iptr right here and we can look at that so you can see once again same kind of thing it just has an integer and a pointer it looks basically the same as these other pointers the nice thing about pointers is they can be assigned to point to other things and things can be moved around easier. Like I don't have to actually copy strings if I want to have a pointer. I can just move the pointer pointing to the address of a different string. And pointers can be even manipulated in other weird, strange ways. So if I change this int num into a int nums, and give it a whole range of values. So now it's an array. Maybe let's go 2, 4, 8, 16, 32. So now it's got five values in there. And if I have this pointer pointing to, well, now it's kind of an address um, of my nums. And now if I look at my nums, um, zero, I can see the first one. 
And if I look at this pointer, I can see the address of it, right? So I'll go ahead and run that. So I'll see the address. But I can dereference it. So if I use a star, I can dereference this address. So I run that. And then it will display the first element in the array because that's what's at the address because it knows it's an integer pointer. But what if I decide to change the address I'm giving it and say plus two? What does that do? So it's this pointer plus two. And I dereference that. So if I run this, and what I get is eight. Well, what's eight? Well, that's actually zero plus one plus two. It's the number two element or the index two element in the array or the third element in the array, which is kind of interesting. I can use pointers to look at different pieces of memory. And I can even go to plus four, which would be this number five element. Run that. And you can see that's a 32 right here. But I can go a little further. I can go to number 5. And look at that. We know that 5 isn't there, so what does it do? Well, it's something else. It's some random piece of information. And I can go 8 or 10 or something else and run this. And then maybe it will do something even stranger or some less strange. You don't actually know what it's looking at because it's looking at memory that has not been assigned to anything. You can even go back. If you somehow knew the address of, well, up here, you could even look at that. So let's take a look at that. Let's take the address of Apple and let's take a look at what it is. So if I say, well, we're going to assign my PTR, let's just go straight down to the straight there, and we'll assign this to the PTR right here. Then it doesn't like that, but we'll go ahead and we'll just pretend that this is actually a integer pointer instead of being a string pointer. So I'll just say this is an int star and, and we'll go ahead and run that. If we run this, it's not really happy, but it displays this number right here, um, which is interesting because this is an integer. And so what is it actually displaying? It's probably displaying like the first three characters right here of Apple as a number, something weird like that. So if I say, well, okay, let's change this to a character pointer. So character pointer, um, and we're going to change this to a character pointer, and we run this, then we're now looking at the value of something here, wherever that is. It does get kind of weird when you're messing with things. So probably best not to do this. Just note that you can work with pointers and pointers can point to the address of some object in memory. And this can be used to move things around. And that becomes more important when you get into later things like passing arrays or if you want to pass structs or things like that into um, functions, and you can work with things that way. Anyway, pointers. You can look at the address of the pointer. The pointer is the address of something, and then you can dereference it with a star in front of it. So dereference the pointer right there to look at the contents of what the pointer is pointing at. Run this again, and you can see right here, the address of the pointer, the contents of the pointer, and what that content address points to when you dereference it.